Well, we've made it to 2018, which means it's finally okay to officially start diving into midterm elections. Some big questions as we near November. Will the GOP build on its majority? Or will the Democrats be able to flip the House, Senate, or both? CBS News Director of Elections and Surveys, Anthony Salvanto, is here for a look at what we might be able to learn from past midterms. All right, Anthony, so now we can talk about it in earnest. We get very excited <laughs> when we see that ball drop and it's an even I number know. underneath it. Right. Yeah, it's an Let election the speculation year. begin. Right. <laughs> so now that we are in an election year, what are the big things that overarching sort of themes that you're going to be watching in these races? Well, the first thing is, remember, most, re most incumbents get reelected. Mm. Um, and no matter what people think of Congress, and that's because people are partisan or people happen to like their own, you know, senator or congressman. That means that we're all going to be focused on a handful of places. Mm -hmm. And that list, as we go through the year, you can watch us add to it, maybe subtract to it. The more we add to it, the more competitive places there are will give you a sense of how things are going. But we will be the way we talk about battleground states mm -hmm. in a presidential year. We'll be focused on a few key Senate and House races this year. And the other thing is most people don't vote in midterms. Right. Um, so what we'll be talking about is whether or not each, each of these parties can get new groups of voters to engage. And I think that'll probably be especially critical if the Democrats are going to have a shot. So I'm a little wary of trying to look at past sort of precedent to kind of indicate what could happen in the future, because as we know, there have been a number of conventions that have absolutely been broken with this new administration. However, in the past, traditionally, what has the impact been of a president's popularity when it comes to midterms? Uh, the president is usually on the ballot, so to speak. Mm. He's not running. But what happens is most people who go to the polls in midterms tell us that they are either in support of or in opposition to the president, and that's the reason for their congressional vote or their Senate vote. Um, now, not only is that a majority who've got the president on their minds, mm -hmm. but then depending on his popularity, you will see them either break, saying that they're casting a vote to try to support his agenda, casting a vote to try and oppose it, and if more people are saying that they're trying to oppose it, well, that gives the president's, uh, the, the out party, the advantage. And look, I suspect here that we will see throughout the year the Democrats try to put Donald Trump on the ballot, right? Mm -hmm. He's got an approval rating in the in the mid 30s that would give them the impetus to do that. At the same time, if this is a low turnout election and that base comes out, well, then we start to see an electorate in the midterms that looks like it usually does, which is it tends to be a little bit older, mm -hmm. right? Um, Democrats need young people to come out and change that dynamic. Um, it tends to be a little more conservative because it's a little bit older. If that happens, then maybe the president trying to gin up his base for its support, then it holds sway. And it's not too early to start talking about that because I think people start talking in those terms right away throughout the year. So we've already heard some storylines emerging. Democrats say that their base is energized and they're getting people who are normally perhaps not quite as low point to Alabama, for instance, as an example of how um, folks who may not normally turn out for a special election or, or a midterm might in fact be inclined to do so this year. But what's the reality? Is it too early to say who might have an edge this year, whether it's Republicans or Democrats? What happens in those special elections that we've all been watching mm -hmm. throughout last year is um, they fundraise off of that and they recruit candidates off of that. So if you're the Democrats, you're going to those money people and potential candidates and you're saying, OK, we've shown we can motivate our base. Mm -hmm. We've shown we can turn them out, even in places like Alabama, mm -hmm. which don't normally go, you know, go Democratic. So let's try to move this needle somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Let's try to take this whatever we did right in these right. places and go someplace else. So I think you will see them at least try to let that have an effect. Um, the other key, I think, is we're going to see these races go to places we don't normally cover in election years. We'll be in California. We'll be in possibly New Jersey, in New York, certainly in Florida, in House races mm -hmm. there. Um, and that's going to make a difference because we don't normally talk about those electorates. Uh, young people definitely will be a factor there uh, for the Democrats. So all of those lessons that they think they learned in or tried to learn in Alabama and Virginia, mm -hmm. the, there may be spots for them to be able to go out and apply. But at the same time, they're also going to have to hang on in very conservative country as well to a lot of Senate seats. So uh, let's talk about the House. Do Democrats have a shot at the House this year? Well, there are going to be probably enough seats in play that we'll be talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, they definitely have a shot. Mm -hmm. It's too early to really, I think, put a percentage you know, on that. But there are probably enough seats that look like they're competitive where mm -hmm. it would be just about in range 
then the key test is going to be whether they can expand that list, like we talked about at the outset, right. whether there's a number of other seats that normally would go Republican by a few percentage points and would be very difficult to move. You start to get into a lot of them are suburban. A lot of them are wealthier. Um, there are places where folks who might normally vote Republican might look at, say, the new tax bill. The new, the new tax plan in places like I mentioned, like in California, New Jersey, and New York, and maybe have second thoughts about voting Republican. That's what the Democrats are going to try to say. Um, places like that where they can expand the map a little bit. They can start to put some of those seats really in play. Then that list expands for something around 20 out to 40, maybe even 50 seats that we're going to be watching on, on election night. If that's the case, then if the Democrats need a couple of dozen to flip the House, that's a that's a wider range that they would have to do it. And then we'll be talking about a competitive house. All right. Anthony Salvanto, I'm sure we will have you back many, many, many oh, times we'll before fun. November. We'll Thanks fun. so much, Anthony. You're welcome.